Hey, wives, we are here on the Ardent Wife podcast sharing another episode with you today. And this is one of actually, I feel like an honor and privilege that I get to do as a wife, and that is to submit to my husband. Uh, I know you're like, what? (laughs) But we have been going through this Titus series, and uh, it's Titus 2 three through five. And we've just been sharing different aspects of this verse. And the last part of Titus 2, 3 through 5 is, and to be subject to their husband. So this week's episode, we are getting down, I want to say down and dirty, but we're just getting really detailed with what it means to be subject to your husband. So welcome my sisters here, Tiffany and Jennifer, uh, to the Art and Wife podcast. Let's talk about my favorite subject. Submission. <laughs> it is, you know, it, it's not always been my favorite subject. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that I've grown in this. Thank you, God. And I think that I still have to grow in this. And I think when I when we talk about this, I, I think about fear mm-hmm. and fear being an underlining component in my walk with God uh, where it caused me to struggle to do this, you know, and, and it was really ultimately my growth in trusting God and my husband over time that makes submission and being subject to him, um, easier, Mm. I don't know if easier is the right word, but, um, I think about, you know, and, and letting go of control. So fear, trust, and control are the kind of things that come up for me, you know, when, when we think about being subject to my husband. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're alone in that. Yeah. And I think um, when we talk about being subject to your husband, I think it's one of those things within the Christian faith community. It's been one of the things that's been highly abused. Yeah. And so people come mm-hmm. into it. I did, you know, they've been hurt by submission. It's been used as a weapon. And so I think it's important to all the women who are listening to actually do the study on the word yourself, you know, before you listen to what the culture has to say about it, what the world has to say, your famous favorite influencer has to say about it, go to (laughs) God, go to God, the creator of submission, the author of submission and say, Lord, what are you saying? What do you have to say to me in this? What is your idea about it? What do you say about it? Instead of allowing the culture to define your definition of submission, do the same yourself. Yeah. And I think that is good to kind of start off here. What we're not saying, right? What we're not saying it is so that when we get into it, you can, that can be weeded out from the start. right? Right. Right. And that's definitely the Holy Spirit, because in my notes, it says what submission is not. And that's exactly what I wanted to share, because I there is a there is a misrepresentation and a bad definition that the world will give you to. What's the word to so that you don't want to do it like that's that's kind of that's how the enemy is going to use it, because submission is so powerful for women in their marriage. And so if the enemy can distract us or um, deflect. That's the word I was thinking of deflect us from doing it Mm -hmm. by putting a bad definition to it. And then we're not honoring our marriage, how God Mm -hmm. designed it. And so let's get into like what submission is not uh, before we started talking about what it is. Hey y'all, we know that you're in the middle of listening to this episode. We would really love for you to take the time to subscribe Share this podcast with a friend. Or it would be a great encouragement to us if you left a voice message and shared your thoughts for today's episode. Now let's get back to the episode. Well, I'd start by saying submission does not mean you are a doormat. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, it does not mean you are a doormat. You know, if we go back up, you know, we've been doing this study in Titus. The one that comes before this is be kind, Mm -hmm. you know, kindness wouldn't be, um, to just 
allow someone to walk over me without saying anything or it wouldn't be loving, love your husband and your children, like everything prior to getting here to subjection. You can't do those things if you are going to, you know, if you're rightfully submitting, you know, if you're submitting in the right way, like it, submission includes all of those things. Not just, hey, whatever you say, you know, and I'm not going to say anything. That's obedience and obey and submission. Those are two different words. And in our one of our previous podcasts, we had nice and kindness. And I think that's also a time let's define obey. Obey is what children do to parents. They listen to them without any regard, like any regard for themselves. You are called to obey. But submission is a voluntary attitude of giving and cooperating. Like it's, it's not out of obedience, it's out of reverence for the Lord, but you're not obeying your husband. And so uh, like being nice, we were talking about before is just appeasing someone. It's not fruitful. So when submission is not being a doormat, you have a voice, you are capable. The God has made us all very capable, both brothers and sisters in Christ. So submission doesn't mean that you're less capable than your husband. Yeah. So you mm-hmm be a doormat like we're actually called as women to be his helper which is his equal like it's this crutch husbands need us they need us to survive and so by being obedient or being a doormat you're not helping your husband out anyway mm-hmm. you're not benefiting him right yeah and it doesn't mean being abused it doesn't mean yes nope physically emotionally it does not mean that you so i just want to say if you're in that situation You know, it's not it's not an act of disobedience of God to leave if you are in physical danger. It's just not so. Yeah. And I think, too, like Dee was saying and on along those lines. Right. When you look at when you look up this word subject, you know, it's different in different translations. Some of them say obedient. Some of them say subject to your husband. But when you look that word up. And if you're on YouTube, I'm looking down here at my notes. Um, it, it talks about to arrange under, to subject, to put into subjection, to submit, to subject oneself, obey, to submit to one's control. And in the commentaries, it talks about this being a military term to set. And it means to set something in place of under something else. So it refers to in context, a wife placing herself under her husband and his authority. And so when you look at it that way, it's like, um, just think about like the chaos. If you think about if this wasn't happening in a marriage, right? Where no, everybody, there's so many chiefs, not enough Indians, (laughs) or, (laughs) you know, everyone wants to lead, then what kind of confusion and chaos would that cause? Would cause within your family your children will be confused what does mama say I can do what does dad say I can do you know it just be so much chaos to where we see that in organizations that we work in how many people work for an organization and you don't know where the authority comes from like who actually gets to say what gets done and everybody is confused nobody knows who to talk to nothing gets done (laughs) now imagine that in the yeah a, a family structure. I see this as God calling order to the family unit. You know, and, it's the husband, it's the wife, the children. And that's what attracted me to submission, honestly, mm-hmm. is because uh, I definitely have superwoman complex. I want to take on all the things, but in God's role for me as a wife, I don't have to be the leader. Like I, that's one role of all the roles that I have on a daily basis that I don't have to be. Um, and I get to come up alongside my husband and support my husband and his role as leader. So it's like, okay, I can be mom. I can be businesswoman. I can be all these things, but I don't have to also have an added responsibility of running my house or yeah, running my household or leading my household. I do manage my household, but I don't have the responsibility of leading it. And so, um, Early in my marriage, I I just remember a sister in Christ just telling me that power that we have 
as wives to submit to our husbands and our husbands have to submit too. we all are called to submit. And first Peter, oh, yeah. it calls us to submit to our church leaders, submit to our government. And so submission is like you said, order, like God's design. And God is about detail and order, like just the way he designed the first seven days, like he's mm-hmm. detailed and in order and it makes sense. And so when you have too many chefs in the kitchen, Something's going to get burned, right? Like that's totally going to happen. And so that was something early in my marriage that I think was like a a gift that I was given was to sim- learn that I it's okay to submit to my husband. And I'm submitting to my husband because I trust in him, but I trust in the Lord more. Mm-hmm. It's not like I I know my husband's going to make mistakes. He might mm-hmm. even make bad decisions, but I know the Lord is sovereign. And so out of my reverence for God, um, because I trust in the Lord, I'm submitting to my husband because I know he's going to take, he's going to fill the gaps where my husband lacks. Well, and if you think about, um, it made me think of Genesis 1, and when Eve disobeyed, God said to the woman, he said to the woman, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. Mm-hmm. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I, for me, I hear that as I know my spirit. Listen, we're ardent wives. We're passionate wives. I have, <laughs> I have, I am designed in a way to some degree where I have a lot to say. I have a lot of feelings about things, but my husband will rule over me. And, and when I pair this with thinking in uh, first Peter, but let your adorning be the hidden person of a heart with imperishable beauty of a quiet and gentle spirit with a <laughs> precious worth in God's sight. Like mm-hmm. there's this, there's this tensions there. There's this tension there that I need God to help me to do it. And he's refining me in the process of this, quiet and gentle spirit, which really is a trust. It's a deep trust, not just in my husband, but in God that, yes. that he, and he's working on me and in me. And it really is an opportunity for me to grow in my intimacy with God of, yes. man, this is a part of the curse um, in a good way. Like God redeems yeah. everything. He's a, a God of restoration, a God of redemption, right? A God of reconciliation. And so there's this place in me where it's talking about submitting, being subject to my husband, and that my beauty will really come from this quiet and gentle spirit. And this all has is all wrapped into submission. Yes. Yes. And I think it's important, too, because, you know, it's not like we're submitting because we love our husband so much or because we think that they deserve for us to submit to them. Right. It's we submit to them out of love for Jesus. It's like mm-hmm. you, this is what you've called me to do. So I'm going to do it because I love you out of my love for you. I'm going to submit to my husband. But in that, I think it's important for the women who are listening because you always hear, right? Well, my husband's just not a leader. My husband, I have to, I have Mm. to step up. I have to do it. If I don't do it, it won't get done. But I say, sister, in kindness and with love, let the ball fall. You know, create that (laughs) void. If there's never a void left for your husband to fill, it's not going to, he's never going to step up to you. You have to create that void. You have to give him space to do it. Leave it undone. You don't have to do everything. Yeah. <laughs> and that's hard, right? It's hard to see your, <laughs> your finances crumble probably. or But you have to, I think it's important to recognize that if the Lord asks you to do it, there's blessing in it. And mm-hmm. trust that my yeah. obedience yeah. to what he has told me to do yeah. is going to be so much greater than me trying to keep all the balls in the air. Yeah. And that's empowering your husband. That's helping him to become stronger as a leader, helping Mm -hmm. him become more confident as a leader and helping him to fulfill his role in the in the marriage, in the Christian household as God has designed it. So you when you are letting him feeble around, do whatever he can to figure it out, you're actually empowering him to step up Mm -hmm. into what God has designed him and called him to do. And I feel like um, we're attracted to people that. we're yoked to people who right, or have stronger skills than us. And so sometimes husbands who feel 
that they aren't um, a leader will marry a leader, right? Because they see that strength in them. But then you can share that gift that you have as a leader with your husband by empowering him and encouraging him to take up his role. And so there's so much power in being in submission. So we've talked about what it's not about. Can we talk about like what submission is about for a wife? Like the goodness of it. Um, Because it's sometimes when you you don't know what it is, it's hard to see that there's good in it. I believe that the goodness of submission, as with anything that the Lord calls us to do, is that we know that there's blessing in it. You know, it's like when God calls us to submit, I believe, um, as what I've seen in my study, that the Lord doesn't call us to do anything that he himself has not already done. Yes. So he is the example of submission, like submission unto death until death yeah to die on a cross but we know that jesus god the father and the holy spirit are equal yeah right but there's still this dance right there's this dance of submission and authority and and us as husband and wife we get to also participate in that dance of submission and authority and there's blessing in it you see just look at jesus in the cross the blessing Right. right the greatness that that submission then causes for the whole world. Right. Like the great blessing that death and submission on the cross would then come to me, to every woman listening to you. Like, so there's blessing in submission and to doing what the Lord has called us to do. And I believe in our marriages, when we choose to submit, there are blessings unseen that we haven't even experienced, maybe because we're too busy trying to do it all. <laughs> you know, like yeah. we want our husbands to be the spiritual leader, but we're not allowing that space. But what if you did? Yeah. What if you did? What if your husband becomes the leader that the Lord has created him to be? And then that creates this cascade of blessing in your home and for generations to come with your children, their children, the impact, right? That your submission as a wife will have on this family union unit the Lord has ordained. Yeah. Yeah. I think think, um, in my marriage, my specific marriage, my husband really, He was born, and I think many men are, but I know my husband in particular, respect is a really big Mm -hmm. thing for him. And so, um, you know, being able to respect him, be thoughtful of my words, when he asked me to do something, doing it, and I'm talking, it can be little things. It can be, hey, can you make sure you do this thing? Hey, can you prioritize this thing today? Hey, can you make sure that, you take care of this thing or, Hey, we're going to go lead in this way. We're going to go serve at this thing and then doing it, you know? And so those are the very practical things. I think it can look like, um, in, and really it's, it's, as you were talking, I was thinking about the idea of it being a covering, right? He's our head. He's, he's a covering for me. So it's actually protective for me too. And Yes. Especially when there's things that I'm not as good at. And I can give you a very specific example where I feel like I wish I would have did something he asked and we were in a conflict with our children and I was really upset. I was feeling emotional. Right. Um, And he was calling our family to pray together. And and so he's with the two kids that were having a hard time with something and they just confessed something. And he's like, "Okay, let's pray. I was feeling angry and upset. I was having a lot of feelings and he's like, come over here and pray. And I was like, I need to stay here. He's like, honey, come over here and pray. Right. Mm -hmm. And there was this wrestle. I mean, that guys, your, my husband was calling me to come next to him and my kids to pray. And I didn't want to Right? Mm -hmm. like, like he was trying to bring us together as a family and unify us, but I was feeling emotional and all. And I did it. I did it. And I, I later, went back and apologized. And then something similar happened later, you know, a a few months later, and I went next and did it. And I I feel like I was able to have the chance to repent and see the benefit of that. But that's a small example, I feel like, of a place where my husband was trying to lead spiritually. I was feeling emotional in my feelings. He was trying to protect us as a family. And, And so there's that emotion that gets in the way and this push and pull. And so I feel like being subject to him in that moment was to submit to his 
desire to bring us closer as a family, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and Jen, I'll have to say, you're not alone in that. <laughs> you know, I've had similar situations and it's to pray. Yeah. Right. And you feel like this tension, this rebellion. It's like, yeah. no, I'm not doing it. Like, doing it. Yeah. Right now, yeah. I'm like, you're not by yourself in that. Yeah. 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 That's a great example. It's a great example. And and when we're submitting, it's it's not saying that our husband is any better than us or our husband knows any more than us. It's letting them know that we know they're not perfect but we trust that God's work in our life, that they're capable. Mm-hmm. And, and that offers room for growth. And I don't know about you, but I plan on growing with my husband until eternity. I don't feel like here, you're 20. This is it. Like I want to grow in deeper relationship, not only with my husband, but also with God. And so when I'm submitting to my husband, it's growing in both aspects. It's growing my relationship and my trust with my husband and God. And Jennifer, that was a great example, like the first time, but then you had the opportunity to repent and then redemption, right? Which grew your trust in not only God, but also in your husband as well in that opportunity. And And that's for my kids, right? Like he was, what was best for my kids, what was best for us for unity. And I'm over here like, I'm angry. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I'm in my flesh right now. Let right. me stay here. I don't want to be in the spirit. Yeah. And that yeah. happens because like, and both, neither one of us are perfect. Like my, yeah. Ed's not perfect. I'm not perfect. We are all sinners saved by grace. Um, but we have a perfect example, which is Jesus of mm-hmm. submission. He voluntarily cooperated with God and died for our sins yeah. so that all of us could be free. Like that's like a perfect example of submission and we're going to mess it up and we're going to, we're going to mess it up, but we also get the redemption of Jesus to try come and repent and try it all over again, yes. which is so yeah. good. Like that's and, what we get to do. And I think it's important too. Like we talk about on every episode, like you cannot do this in your own strength. Like no. Jen, you, we, you talked about, we sitting over there pouting. The flesh is like, no, I want what I want. I'm not doing that right now. I don't care what you have to say because we get puffed up our pride, our emotions and everything. Like we don't want to break down. We don't want to compromise, but we have to depend on the power of the spirit. I think it's Galatians 5, 16, where it says, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Flesh. Right. So it's like, we have to continually be filled, right? There's a verse says, be filled. It's not a one and done thing. It's a continuation. Be filled with the spirit, not drunk with wine. You know, it's like, that's where our time and our attention goes in those things. So that when we encounter these things with our husbands and we're able to surrender to the spirit in us, because we cannot, and we will not submit on our own because in essence, submission is a level of obedience. Yes. Like when I submit to my husband, he said, well, I think, can you prioritize this today? Yeah. In doing that, there is an element of obedience in doing what they say, right? It's a submissive, a submissive obedience because you do what they say. And so I think it comes against our flesh to be told what to do. Nobody gets to tell me what to do. And so you get this direct um, attack. You feel mm-hmm. like, you know, my rights are being taken away from me. But, you know, when we are, when we become like Jesus as followers of Jesus, we get to lay down those rights and we see that there's actually power in submission. Submission This, Mm -hmm. you know, this lackless or powerless thing, like there's power in it. It's empowerment for sure. And our husband's, for them to be the leader that they're called to be. And so we're going to continue this conversation in the Ardent Wise Club because it's so good. Um, and I think it's it's so many aspects of it. And um, there could be, I want to say, there has to be trust in the relationship for us to submit. And so if there is some distrust in your marriage because of whatever sin, that's time for forgiveness. There's time for repentance. There's time for you to come to the Lord in that. So we'll continue this conversation in the Ardent Wives Club, which is our exclusive club that's on Facebook. And we just 
have bonus episodes there. We have prayer challenges there. We just really just really walk this out, our little 30 minute episodes out every week in the Art and Wives Club. You can find it on the link below in the description and join us there. And we're just going to keep crying together, laughing and growing closer to Jesus with each and every episode. I think we finished this Titus series. So stay tuned for more about that. And just thank you so much for listening to us here today.